Hey, did you ever wonder the difference between you and someone else who calls himself a Christian? Like, did you ever wonder why when you're around them you feel conviction or they just seem so far out there? Did you wonder why they can live live like in the midst of chaos and it doesn't even seem to bother them? Well, if you don't know that answer, I want to tell you, it's, it's about being born again. Jesus told one of the Pharisees who went out to, went out to um, find Jesus in the night and asked him, hey, what is the difference between you and us? You know, the, the constant friction they were in all day long. And so it seems like he kind of snuck out and went to talk to Jesus himself. He's like, yeah, I, I can see you have God with you. And you're so much different than we are. You have his power in your life. What, what is, what's the deal here? He was really saying, why are you different than we are? And Jesus said in John 3, you can check it out for yourself. He said, you must be born again to be able to see the kingdom of God. And in fact, he said, if you're not born again, you, you won't be able to enter into it. And then Nicodemus was like, okay, well, what does that mean? And Jesus said, being born of the Spirit. It's not a flesh thing, but it's being born from above. And so that is the answer. That's why some people who... Um, look like they're way out there and you can't understand where they're coming from, it's because they're born again and they can see what you can't see. They know what you don't know because they have God's Spirit on the inside of them. And if you don't, God is just a person or maybe not even. You just know of Him. You don't know Him. You only know about Him and so you can only believe just so much because you're limited, like the Pharisees were. They were in constant friction with Jesus. But the thing is, they wouldn't surrender to Jesus. In fact, he said, your father is a devil because they were arguing with him. And many people do that. They argue with people who are Christians saying, you know, lots of times pretty much telling them that they're nuts. But it's because you can't see. It's, it's not something you can see, but it's that submission, that surrender. Surrender to him. Ask him to come and live on the inside of you, and he will. In fact, Revelation 3.20, he said, I'm knocking at the door of your heart. He's knocking at the door of your heart today, right now. And if you would heed his voice, he would come. He would come and live on the inside of you. And then he would correct you. Revelation 3.19, he corrects those he loves. He's going to correct you, teach you, convict you. You know how you feel when you're around that real Christian, that conviction that you feel sometimes where it makes you feel icky and, and, and not right about yourself and so you just don't want to be around them? That's actually really Jesus reaching out to you. He's reaching out to you through that conviction to let you know that you're not right with him. And if you're not right with him on that day, he's going to say, I didn't know you. You can't do his will. Revelation 3, um, Revelation, I mean, excuse me, Matthew 7, 21 through 23. Not everyone who calls me Lord. You can't just say I'm a Christian and call him Lord. Not everyone who calls me Lord will enter into the kingdom of heaven, but those who do the will of the Father. And you can't even know or understand as well. If you're not born again, you can't see. 
you're not going to get it. You're just going to go through the motions of religion like the Pharisees were doing, like lots of people do. They're a religion. They don't know Jesus or they don't believe in Jesus. He's a real person. He's a son of man. He gave his life for you so you could have eternal life. Whoever believes in him. So if you're going to believe in him and surrender to him, then he will come and live on the inside of you and teach you his will. Then you won't be in that category of not everyone who calls me Lord will enter into the kingdom of heaven. And then in verse 22, and many are going to argue with him, but Lord, we did this in your name, we did that in your name. But you were just doing this religious stuff without his power. You couldn't even see what you were doing or, or understand. And so it's not going to work for you that way. The only way to the Father is through Jesus. And then he's going to say, Away from me, I never knew you, you who practice lawlessness. So if you just refuse to believe, to surrender, you won't have eternal life. If your father is the devil, if you're like the Pharisees, if you're just going to be religious and live by your own opinion, you won't submit to Jesus. You won't have eternal life. You won't be able to see or enter into the kingdom. You'll be in the dark, as you could be right now. Submit to him. Right now, pray with me. Jesus, we submit to you. Come and live on the inside of us. Be our God. We submit to you. We surrender. We resist the enemy. And we welcome you. We're going to do life your way. Come and live on the inside of us and prepare us. Tell us things to come. Remind us of your word. Be there for us. Love you and praise you and give you all the glory. Thank you, Jesus. It's so important that you do this before Jesus comes, before it's too late. Submit to him. Let him be your God. There's no other way. Every other way is a lie. You won't be able to see or understand until you surrender. So I hope you did that today. And if you did, let me know. I'd be so excited to know. Thank you so much for listening today. God bless you.